Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins to V8s. I'm back to do a little video with you, a little project I got going on. I actually got a really big project going on. I got this 67 Charger. I've been working on this for a little over a year now. It's a full nut and bolt on the restoration, on the rotisserie and all that. Um, but anyways, if any of you followed me on Facebook or on uh, YouTube or on um, my website, vtwins to v8s.com, you'll see the progress. We started out with a bare shell, sandblasted it, did all the bodywork, painted it all the way around, and just built up from there. We got a nice big block wedge motor over here. It's fuel injected. We're running vintage air. We got all the nice stuff to make it a nice driving car. All suspension underneath the car is all uh, Riley Motorsports uh, altercation you might know it as and uh, so we're coilovers front and rear we've got um, a four link in the back we've got tubular control arms and a whole tubular K-frame up front rack and pinion steering we got all the recipe for a really really nice car really nice driving and handling car um, he wanted to stay with the original engine and I'm fine with that and the original 727 but I talked my client into like making it into an overdrive car so you can get it on the highway and you know blister along the way it really was made to be done. So uh, what we've done, what we've done, is we've decided to go with Gear Vendors Overdrive. Keep the original 727 Torque flight that's pretty well bulletproof, and um, add this Gear Vendor unit to the back set, back end of it that'll give us an overdrive. Not only will it give us an overdrive when we're in high gear or drive third gear, whatever you want to call it, but it has the ability to split gears so we can have first gear, first gear over, second gear, second gear over, third gear, third gear over. Uh, a really, really sweet setup. It kind of mimics what you're seeing in the um, in the uh, OEM now with, you know, six speeds, eight speeds, nine speeds, ten speeds. It's that quick in incremental shifting that keeps the engine right where you want it to be in the power band. Uh, Reminds me a lot of like the dirt bikes we rode when we were kids, you know, when you you had a you know a 250 two stroke with a five or a six speed, and you just wound the thing up and you just fan through the gears and it just stayed right in that power band. Uh, it's the same thing here. So, anyways, I'm gonna do this little video and I'm gonna walk you through putting this thing all together. I'm gonna bring the camera over. I'll show you the pieces and then we'll kind of go through the whole thing. So what we have here is this is the actual gear vendors unit. This particular unit right here bolts onto this adapter piece, which in turn bolts onto our 727. This tail housing here is removed. This tail housing here, or adapter housing, is put in place of it. This is attached to the end of it. And uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'll walk you around a little bit. I'll show you some of what we've got going on here with our car. This is my, this is our 67 Charger. This is what I'm talking about. This is what the front suspension looks like. Um, you know, basically kind of keeping the inside, you know, all stock and the outside pretty much stock, but really, you know, resto modding the car or pro touring it, whatever you want to call. Here's our wedge motor. We're running Sniper fuel injection, the Holley HyperSpark distributor to control the timing as well yes we're running vintage air we got vintage air here we got the whole vintage air serpentines i mean um, belt set up so that's our mill that's what the 727 is going to go behind with this gear vendors overdrive and enough about that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and remove this tail housing off the back of the transmission i'm not going to keep the camera on while you watch me take it apart I'm going to pop these bolts out. I'm going to flip the transmission over. There's an inspection plate on the bottom of the tail housing. I'm going to take that off. There's a snap ring in there. This housing is going to come right off. Okay, so my first step is I've taken all of these bolts off of my tail housing. Okay, so I, got, I turned my transmission over, got my bolts out, took this inspection plate that's right here. There's two screws to it. Took that off. There's my snap ring right there. Got my snap ring pliers here. I'm gonna take my snap ring, loosen it up like that, and I'm gonna slide this tail light, tail shaft housing right off. Okay, so I got our tail left, tail shaft housing off. One of the things I neglected to show you was the removal of the speedometer drive gear assembly. Uh, that has to come out before this will slide off. That just one bolt, boom, you just take a pair of pliers, it's got an O-ring on it, that pops out. This is your uh, 
snap ring, open that up, this whole housing slides right off. Now, the next thing is inside of this housing, you'll see right here and then here is your park pole. This is when you put your car in park, this is what holds it. We're gonna take this out and we're gonna put it in our new housing, then we can put our new housing on. Okay, so I put my tail shaft housing in the vise and hopefully this will make it easier for you to see. Is uh, So this is your park pole here. And there's a snap ring right here. We're gonna take that snap ring out and we're gonna take this little pole right here out. So let me do that and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so here we go. I took my snap ring out. This is my pole. Once you get the snap ring out, wiggle this around a little bit. Here it is, it comes right out. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this pin right here and it's gonna remove my actual um, lever and um, spring right here and I'll be, be able to transfer this over to the other housing. Okay, so here we go. So my particular pin that holds this pawl in has a threaded area and hopefully yours does too. It makes things really sweet. Let me just where I took and I threaded this quarter 20 bolt in there. So now what I can do is I thread that in there. Now, bingo, my, my pin comes right out. See that? I took the spring off already because I'm holding the camera. But uh, you slide this right out like this. Boom, there's your pin. Set that on the bench. And then here is your pawl piece right here, just like this. Okay? Now, over here is my spring. This sits like that that goes right through there like that that's what we just took apart so now as you can see i got nothing in my housing so now i'm able to transfer this in to my gear vendors housing that i have over here which ironically looks exactly the same so what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that over to there and we'll get ready to do the next step after that okay so i got my new tail housing piece in the vise i dropped my paul is in here right here you can see it it's right there my springs on and my pin is in now that my pin is in I will take and unscrew my little bolt boom that's in there we're all good now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this this locking ball right in here and then put the snap ring back in and then we're good to go it's all in like we were just a second ago I got this drop down right in there my snap rings on and everything's good to go. Now down inside the, this housing is where that snap ring goes. The snap ring is still inside of this housing here. I'll compress it, drop it in the other one, and we're, uh, we're good to go. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to put our um, tail shaft housing back on our 727. Now, got my park pawl in like I should. I got my snap ring down in here. You can see it right there. Now I'm going to slide this thing back on, give you a little crash course on how all this works. This comes off of your linkage and goes back and forth. And what that does is it goes into the end of this housing, it pushes on that little paw, and boom, that little arm comes right out over there like that. When that arm comes out right there, see the little square part right there? It locks into this square gear on the back of the transmission. That's what puts your car in park. So when we slide this piece back onto here, this has to go inside of this hole. And then that snap ring that's down inside slides up over this bearing and it locks on right here. Then we can put all of our bolts in. So it's kind of like you got to pay attention to what you're doing. It's really basic stuff, but you know, this all has to kind of happen at one time. So I'm going to pop this thing together and uh, I'll come back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back. I got my tail shaft housing bolted on, my snap ring seated, got all my bolts torqued. I've put this coupling that comes onto the back of the tail shaft housing and goes onto the transmission. I put that on there and I double checked my park so that I can make sure that in fact, I, um, I am in park, which in fact I am, 
and it releases so everything's right I'll bring the camera over so we can see okay so as you can see here the snap ring is where it's supposed to be I put all my nice new bolts on there everything's torqued everything's up there flush my my transmission linkage moves freely I've got park now I've got this coupling here that's supplied in the kit it makes the union between this tail shaft output shaft and the gear vendors overdrive so I'm gonna put that in there like this to where it's supposed to be and then I gotta make sure that it's all the way in in other words I gotta make sure that I have 20 thousandths between the end of this and the face of this housing so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll go from there I've checked my end clearance with the straight edge so I know I got plenty of end clearance here for when my gear vendors unit pops onto the back all my bolts are torqued, my plate's back in, the, covers, the inspection plate that covers the snap ring is all on there. I've double checked my park so my park works, it engages, it disengages. So now basically I'm good to go. I'm going to take this, the transmission, I'm going to flip it over so we can test fit the uh, gear vendor unit on the back. Okay, so now we're going to make our gear vendor's overdrive unit to our adapter tail shaft housing and coupling. So I'm going to bring the camera over, I'll show you both ends, and then we'll slip this together. It just slides right on there, it's no big deal, but I did want to come back and just show you the whole thing going together. So this is the end of the unit. Here's your input shaft. Obviously you got a gasket on there, you got all these bolts. And then on the other side, on the tail shaft housing side, we've got our coupling here. That's where that input shaft is going to go in there. And then these are the bolts. All those studs will go through these holes here. So I'm going to slip that on and we'll just show you what it looks like after it's on there. Okay, so here we are. The thing is all mated, mated together. Uh, when you slide it on, it goes on nice and easy. I just had to turn the tail shaft yoke a little bit just to get all those splines to line up. So a little wiggling and a little wiggling on the studs, boom, it goes right home. It's on there nice and even. I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you what it looks like. So there it is. It's all bolted up. Well, that's not bolted. I mean, it's all slid right on right here, but you can see where it's flush. It's sitting right like it's supposed to. When I turn this, you can hear the inside of the transmission moving, so you know you got a direct drive, and that's it. We're good to go. When we get it, when I uh, get, put the transmission in the car, I won't have this on here because it's very tail heavy. So I'll slide this on here. Once I have the transmission in the car, a couple of wires connect here, speedometer connects there, drive shaft there, and you're good to go. Thanks for tuning into my uh, project today. The gear vendors overdrive installation uh, won't be complete until I put the transmission in the car. I'll come back. I'll do another episode for that and uh, the wiring and all that stuff. I do have the car kind of pre-wired, but you know everything that goes on underneath the car. I'll show you the controls, measuring of the drive shaft, things of that nature. So please uh, support me if you can. Subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of how tos. If there's something you want to see me do, uh, but by all means, feel free to ask, and if it fits into my schedule, I'll, I'll definitely help you out. Um, my name is Troy Kane. I'm on vtwinstheV8s.com is my website. I have a Facebook page, vtwinstheV8s.com, and of course, my YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for tuning in.